What is going on, everybody? Believe with Rajiv. Wisconsin marches on. Let's go. Always better to win than lose. Let's talk about it on today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. Thank you for making this one of your first listens every single day. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, as always. Uh, really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Uh, let's bring Rajiv in. We got the dub, right? Like The dub. Let's, let's go. And we got something to play here. Hold on one sec before we get into this. You ready for this? Badgers ready. winning a national title? Absolutely. Going on final four runs? Why not? It's Believe with Rajiv on today's <laughs> Locked On Badgers. What the hell? How about it? Let's wow. go. That is fantastic. Let's I go. Love I love it. Listen, you know what? We're not in the NCAA tournament. That's fine. Only two teams in college basketball get to end the season on winning runs. The NCAA tourney champion and the NIT champion. Maybe the CBI champion, but who cares about that? Listen, like... This is exciting. We're we're winning games. We're playing games in the tournament. It's it's not it's not the NCAA's. We beat Oregon on the road, which is you know frankly, it's look it's a good road win. That let me just say this: that court needs to be outlawed oh, from college brutal. basketball. You cannot be serious. That I mean, you can't even see the lines. It's it's preposterous. Um, but it's exciting to see the win. I said it on the last the show after the last reaction show. I just want to watch the Badgers play, and I want to watch the Badgers win. And we've had such a rough year. We had a rough year in football. Then, then it became good with Luke Fickle. We've had a rough year in basketball. Let's just enjoy the game for what they for what it is. They're coming to here to Vegas next week. I'm going to be out of town. For anyone who's in Vegas, I won't be there, but I, I will be there in spirit. And I think we can really get this done. And why not? Why not just win this? Get the get the team some confidence. Get the guys, you know, up a little bit. And send us into the off season on a bit of a high, right? I mean, go Badgers! Exactly. Does anybody in the comments like the floor? Um, a lot of comments in here. Dominic Shiro, um, Logan Couch, uh, Mike Bows does say that uh, Robbie Hummel said the floor isn't bad from floor level, which makes sense. It, it, you probably don't notice it as much. But does anyone actually like the design from the sky view, from the camera, from the broadcast view? I've never, literally never found anyone that said, no, you know what? I think y'all are wrong. I really like what they did there. Right? I think universally it's pretty terrible. Let's go, Gus. Let's Gus, get Gus. And we talked about it before the NIT started, Rajiv. You and I kind of agreed on this. Like, more games are better, right? Yeah. Like, the season didn't go the way you want, but it's kind of – a bit of a loser mentality to say, well, the season didn't go the way we want, so screw it. I don't want to play anymore, and it doesn't matter. No, you still can get something out of this. You can still put some wins together, put some momentum going into next year. It's not the be-all, end-all. It doesn't mean next year is going to go a certain way because you know this. Because next year's team is going to be different. The locker room is different next year, right? There's going to be transfers in, transfers out, but you're still better off going into the offseason with some wins. Like it has more momentum in the recruiting trail, right? If you go into the offseason with a couple wins, it's just, it, I think it does help. It makes a difference. And if you're going to play in the games anyway, doggone it, you might as well win them. I agree completely. And, and never underestimate the experience that's gained from, from tournament tournament experiences is, is important. And we play early season tournaments. Well, of course we play in the NCAA tournament. These things matter. And it's getting your legs under you playing these games every couple of days, playing teams that you're not used to playing. You've never really scouted these teams before. It's good experience for next year. It's getting Connor Asijian, who's in a slump right now, more experience. He's playing mm -hmm. through that a little bit. It's getting guys like Klesmit, who joined our team this year and has been a fantastic transfer, a great game, one more great game for Max Klesmit. What does this do for his confidence going into next year, right? I mean, he's all of a sudden gone from – a transfer in, a guy that, that got into the starting five, a guy that we missed when he was hurt, to now a critical member of our team. Now you add in guys like Gus Bus coming in next year. You add in potentially more transfers. And, and where does this set us up for next year? It puts us in a position where we've got more experience, we're winning games, we're getting experience winning games in tournaments. I don't care what tournament it is. The, the preseason tournaments don't really matter either, but – it's, it's, it's important to get wins. It's important to get that experience. 
and, and play more. And frankly, in a season that has had a lot of disappointment, to have the guys getting up for wins, it, that, it breeds winning mentality. And there's nothing wrong with that. And teams like North Carolina that chose not to play in this tournament, I, I think that's nonsense. I Come out here and play. You know, you, you finish over 500, you're invited to the tournament. Sure, it's not what you want, but get out there and win. And I, listen, we're in the semifinals. We're playing North Texas. We can win this thing. We can absolutely win this thing. Yeah, you know, and the, North Carolina's kind of weird, right? Started the season number one. Maybe that thing just all fell apart in the locker room. You can almost – I hear you on that. You can almost maybe see the the reasoning for a team like that not to play. But for a team like Wisconsin that basically everybody could potentially return, like you're just building more chemistry, you're building more camaraderie, um, it, it would be a bad sign, in my opinion, to go into the next season and say, no, we don't think the locker room's up for playing in this, right? That would be a sign of, in my opinion, some fractures there where people have kind of given up on it. And the one thing that I think we've talked about, the one thing I don't think you can argue with Greg Gard and this team is they haven't stopped playing for him. They haven't stopped playing for this team. They play very hard, um, basically every game consistently. Now, there are very big flaws, which we've talked about for Chief. Like, again, we don't want this to become, hey, we won a couple games in a row. This is great. Everything's trucking. No, there are very real flaws and holes on this team uh, from the depth, from offensive droughts, from playmaking to size. Like, yes, all of, every single one of those is still here, right? This doesn't change anything big picture, but they play really hard. And as much as we want to point to the lack of depth in the roster construction as, hey, that's on great guard, so is this team playing hard. That's also on great guard. And I think Badger fans should take confidence in that going into the offseason. That's one of been that's really been one of my big takeaways down the stretch. The team didn't fall apart. They they kept playing hard for Greg Gard and for each other. And how many teams do fall apart in situations like this? How many teams fall apart when they they narrowly miss out on the tournament? Their coach is under fire from you know a percentage of the fan base, and there's a lot of negative talk about the program. But these guys rally together. And they're playing their butt off. And, you know, the, the Cole Center was up for the last game. That was actually that was the last game we're going to play in the Cole Center this year. And I expect there to be Badger fans out here in, in, in my hometown in Vegas next week. And I think it'll be fun. And, I mean, it's – it's yeah, they, they're not giving up. They're just playing hard. And, and it's just going to help them. It's going to do no harm. No harm can come of this. Let's just go out there and play, win a tournament, and and rally around the guy that, frankly, guard has been under a lot of pressure. We've talked about it a lot on this show. Other shows talk about it. A lot of lot of discussion about guard, but they're they're just coming out here and playing. And you know, I mean, there's not there's nothing wrong with that. And if anything, we're just getting good experience. Yeah, I, I agree with just really everything you're saying. Though the other thing I point out too is this team also illustrates how far we need to go in certain areas. You know, like Oregon, the length is it's tough for Wisconsin. The way this team is constructed right now, it's tough for Wisconsin to get buckets around the around the or get paint buckets, right? Crowell struggled, Wall struggled. Uh, we struggle on drives on the rim. We I mean this this win as as illustrative as it is for the qualities of this team, good. It is also illustrative of the qualities that need to come up. Like this team lacks length, athleticism, the ability to finish near the rim. Um, Oregon had all of that, and it caused a lot of problems for Wisconsin. So that's it shows you right there how far Wisconsin has to come up next year. But again, in the moment, getting a win is a, a big deal. Um, we're going to take a very quick break here. Come back. We're going to really dig into all your comments next. We're going to do that next on Lockdown Badgers. We've got the therapy session with Rajiv. Believe with Rajiv, which we played at the beginning. How'd you like that, by the way? <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I absolutely it, love it. Let's do it one more time oh, only God. in case people missed it. Um, this is our new Badgers winning a national title. Absolutely. Going on final four runs. Why not? It's Believe with Rajiv on today's Locked On Badgers. I love it. All right, we're going to take a very quick break for our friends of the show. Come back into all your comments next, next on Locked On Badgers. But first, today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Um, and the tournament is, is obviously heating up. Now's the perfect time to download FanDuel, um, America's number one sports book, our favorite sports book here over at Locked On. And new customers, you get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. You can bet on everything from money line to point scores, three-pointers drained. Plus, you can combine all those bets into a same-game parlay to win even more, make it even more exciting. I've talked about my love for Phoenix. Um, I've also talked about if you're a Bucks fan, this is maybe a great time to jump on that bandwagon. I think they're coming out of the East. But if you want kind of a sneaky value pick, Dallas plus 1,200 to come out of the West, if, if they can get healthy, and that's been a struggle, that's a team that came out of the West last year. 
And plus 1,200, that's great value for any team with Luka Doncic. So something I'd think about if you're interested in it. Um, don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets back when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Uh, when you're done here, go check out Locked On College Basketball, especially with March Madness. You're not going to find better coverage of the tournament, of the brackets, than the dudes over at Locked On College Basketball. Go check them out wherever you get podcasts available on YouTube. All right, let's get back into this. A bunch of your comments coming up. This is the therapy session um, coming off. Uh, listen, the season's not over yet, and we got one more here. Ready? This is the therapy session. Hey, Doc, I, I need to talk about it. My head is going to explode. What the heck just happened? It's the therapy session on Locked On Badgers. Where's, where is this all coming from? I love this. How have I not heard about this? We have a we have a group text that we talk every day, and I have not yeah. heard anything about this. I keep some, some things uh, kind of up the sleeve. There uh, you let, go. Let's let's get into comments. We got a bunch of comments, a, a bunch of things I want to get into here. Uh, Christopher Gerber. Some of these are just more comments and questions. Uh, never a doubt on Wisconsin. TJZK said twelve or thirteen from the charity stripe. I mean, yeah. We we talked about early in the year, like you're losing close games because you're missing shots at the free throw line. And how many times did that bite us in the butt? Multiple, I mean, multiple times throughout the season. But I, I do think that we, we talked about Klesman a little bit, and we that's great. And well, we do talk about the bat a little bit here too. I, I, I boy, I mean, it's like Jekyll and Hyde sometimes with the field goal percentage of our bigs, right? Tyler Wall and Crowell tonight shot a combined um, five of nineteen. Five of 19, and these guys shoot all their shots from within 10 feet. It's unacceptable. And 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 there have been we we've had games like that, and and we've lost, of course. We've had games like that, and we've won like this. And you know, it's we shot seven of 22 from three tonight. This was not a good offensive night, and we came out with the win. So there's positives in that. But boy, our inability to score at a higher clip from inside the paint is just really really bad and it's more it's more so the inconsistency of it right there because there's games where we shoot really well and there's games where we're getting blocked time and time again and i think it's a little bit of um you know lack of creativity on post moves and what we're doing down there and maybe just we're trying too hard to score in the paint i'm interested to hear your thoughts on this i just i just feel like why do we struggle so much from down there it's not like wall in his career has been very inventive He's been pretty good and very creative down low. And Crowell has shown a lot of growth this year, and he had an okay game. But it's just, it's it's just really baffles me how we can see games with such an incredibly low shooting percentage from the paint. Yeah, and I think Wall gets in his head. There's there's the old saying that shooters shoot themselves out of slumps. Well, it doesn't really work if you're an undersized post player going up up against a, a front court full of six ten, six eleven long guys. You know, like. You can't shoot yourself out of a slump when you're struggling to, to finish at the rim over longer guys because the shots don't get easier. You know what I mean? And Tyler Wall, as much as I've, I've defended him a lot in this show because I think he does a lot of things really well, he can't continue to put up poor shots in the post like that. That, And he, it's, it's a pattern this entire year, and I don't know where that came from, whether it's a feeling of, you know, I need to bear a bigger burden offensively for this team because we struggle scoring. I'm an upperclassman. I'm a leader. I need to be that guy. But wherever that's coming from, it's hurt this team in stretches. And today, I think we saw signs of that where he really, he didn't, he didn't get the feel of the game. And um, yeah, guy said Paris Pian Gamecast missed 15 layups tonight. No, <laughs> like the problem is though, we talked about that. Like, and guy, thank you for the comment. You're missing layups because you're going up against guys that are longer and more athletic than you, right? And that, that makes those layups tough shots. Not every shot at the rim is created equally is what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, bigger, faster, longer players finish at higher clips at the rim because they're, they're finishing over people and we're finishing against people that are taller and more athletic than us. It makes it difficult. I'll tell you what I'm excited for. And I hope he's listening. I want Gus bus to be in there scoring in the paint and showing us what kind of moves he has down there, because that is going to be fun to see. Gus is going to have, is going to bring a lot more, um, you know, just creativity and, and, and changes to what we have down low. So that, that's going to be exciting to see. And we've got a lot of things to look forward to, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it, the inconsistency is very difficult and, and it's frankly why we are where we are. We're in this NIT tournament because we didn't have consistency, whether it be shooting the three down low post moves. I mean, so many, so much inconsistency throughout the year, which is why we're playing this tournament. 
That being said, we're still in it. We're playing hard. We're playing well. We, we've beaten some decent teams. And, uh, you know, I mean, let's, we've got, we, we're in the final four. Final four, guys. Final mm-hmm. four. <laughs> yep. Ignore the context. We'll just call it the yes. final four. We're there. Final four. Uh, Brian Latch says, Klesman brings it late. Thank you, young man. Uh, John Burns, Mighty Max. Uh, yeah, agree on both. Max has been really good down the stretch for us. Uh, Tom Nieces, this is something I actually hit on earlier, but he said kind of the same thing. Um, good to win this game, but showed we need to add shot makers in length. Speaking of that Oregon length athleticism, it was very apparent. We had a mm-hmm. lot of issues with that. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, Rajiv, do you feel like Gray Guard has gotten too tight with like, – it feels like he's tightened up his bench even more in the NIT. And we were kind of hoping – I think we certainly didn't expect him to blow it out and say, hey, we're going to – our rotations are going to be completely different than the regular season, but it feels like the bench is basically Carter Gilmore and a few sprinklings of mm-hmm. Jordan Davis. Like where's Lindsay? Where's uh, it just feels very shortened now. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like he's trying to make up for errors throughout the year. And, and the fact that we're not in the NCAA tournament, I think, I think he's really trying to say, okay, let's win this, which I appreciate the fact that, that we're really going for this. But I agree completely. I mean, look, I've said many times that I think Isaac Lindsay is can be a real contributor for this team. I like the poise he brings on the court. I like his shooting ability. And we're not seeing him except some garbage time, I think, in the last game. But, yeah, I mean, I I, I think we, we need to see that a little more. I, I appreciate the, the the additional minutes that he's given Kamar Me Not today. He only had five minutes. But, yeah, I mean, Carter Gilmore, 28, Jordan Davis, 19. That's it. And, Matt, and, and McGee, five. It's not enough. And – and yeah, I think he's he's really just kind of try to to win this thing. But look, we all want to see Hodges out there. We all want to see Lindsay out there. There needs to be more, especially in this tournament, because why do you what do you have to lose right now? We we've said that if we lose this, if we lose in here, yeah, it may stink what we lost, but the season's over. Okay, but why not try to get out there and do something? But like I said, I can see both sides. I can see the appreciation for trying to win it. But also, you got to develop these guys and see what you have going into next year. So I would certainly like to see that bench opened up a little bit. Um, this is what we've seen a lot this year. We've seen Davis and Gilmore coming off the bench for a while, which we know is not good enough, and there needs to be more. Um, but, you know, I mean, I think that uh, this is just who he is right now, and this is what he feels like this is all he has, and that's why we're, we're doing what we're doing. Yeah, I agree. Um, bad dramatic more just they were too long. Um, Oregon guys were very long. CJ Abbott, the ducks were long for real. Steve Lockie, Tyler, one for nine, and that one was a three pointer. We talked about it in the live stream. <laughs> the, one for one, he shot 100% from three. The statistical chance of Tyler Wall hitting one shot in a game and that one shot being a three pointer that's a pretty remarkable effort there. Um, like it's just you know, I want to put this in the chat too. And Rajiv, you and I have talked about this, you know are people enjoying this NIT more than you thought you would? Because when we started the NIT, we did a show, how excited are y'all for the NIT? Do you want to be there or not? And I would say it was about a 50, 50 split of just go home and don't play. I'm curious now that we've played games if people are, are more into this because competitively I'm kind of into it. You know, Way I think it's, I thought it would be. what's interesting is if you watch the, if you go back to the very first game we played in the NIT, the Cole center was basically empty. I mean, it was virtually empty. And then we won the game. We're moving on. And all of a sudden, there's a little bit of hype. The second game, the crowd was actually great. I mean, it wasn't sold out, of course, but the crowd was up for it. And now I feel like that we, we get to the quarterfinals now. We're playing Oregon, an actual bona fide, you know, power five team. And I think people are a little more excited. So, yeah, I mean, I, of course, I'm excited about it. I did not think I was going to be. I watched the first game just kind of because I felt like I had to because I, I, I'm not going to miss a Badger game. And then now it's like, wow, I mean, we're – we're actually we can actually come to Vegas and win this thing and and make it on ESPN as being crowned NIT champions. Which, frankly, I mean that's kind of cool. I mean, it's certain, there's certainly nothing wrong with it, and you can you can make fun of it, you can poke fun of the tournament, and that's fine. And look, this is the only NIT tournament we've been in in my fandom as as a Badger since 1999. We missed we did not get into the tournament in 2018 when we when we missed the NCAA because we didn't even make the NIT. So why not? Like, let's go out there and just. Say, look, yeah, we didn't we didn't make the NCAA's. We're one of those teams that perennially makes that tournament. We didn't make the tournament, but we still took this other one seriously and we won it. That sends a nice message. And I I saw a stat um yeah, a couple days or last couple days on Twitter about 
like uh, in the last 25 years, the most NCAA tournament wins. So like, you know, the blue bloods like Duke and mm-hmm. Kansas and them are in the top 50 plus wins and your 40 plus wins are Gonzaga and Connecticut and 30 plus wins, Villanova, Syracuse, Wisconsin, and a couple other teams. We're in that group of the most turning wins in the last 25 years. We basketball is, is, a, is a big thing for us. And yeah, it's, it's really painful that we missed the tournament, but I think it's really nice for our fans and for badge fans like us and all these guys listening to this show right now, the 249 people of you watch us live. Thank you for, for, for listening to us talk yeah, about the NIT, great. but that's because we're, we're badger fans and it's, it sends the message that yeah, whatever game we play in, we're going to play hard. And I, and I love that. And it's why believe with Rajiv continues to thrive. Yeah, that is wild. By the way, 251 watching live right now. I appreciate the the. I don't know if I can say hell. I'm gonna say it. I appreciate the hell yes. out of all y'all. <laughs> like really, this is and it's it's this is reflective of the community we've built. It's not me. It's it's Rajiv. It's all of y'all. It's Commandant Clink and CJ and Don't Badger Me and Rio and even Bo Dragon. And even Bo. I was just gonna say even Bo Dragon. He's over. He's of course in here commenting. Even Bo Dragon. <laughs> um, we're gonna take a very quick break. Then we're gonna get into more comments and maybe even talk a little tiny bit of spring football with Rajiv because we haven't talked any football with Rajiv mm-hmm. lately. A uh, very quick break for our friends of the show though. All right, let's keep it going. Let's get back into this. Um, really quick housekeeping. We do uh, live stream, like uh, live watch parties of the game. So we get together, we watch the game live as it's happening. Rasheed's there, Justin's there, other fans are there. Um, if you all are interested in that and you didn't see that memo, uh, we'll do it again for the next game. Feel free to join us. It's a lot of fun to talk about the game and watch it together as it's happening. So um, definitely know that that's coming up. We'll do that again. Okay, let, let, Rajiv, let's let's do a little more basketball and then – no, let's just shift to football. Let's shift to football for now. Yeah, Bo Dragon says that this is a great opportunity to talk Badger football again. <laughs> um, rosters were released. Practice starts on Saturday. You, we're all going to be coming up for the launch to do a live show. Everyone is excited. Brady Collins is tweeting out like a madman. Uh, spring spring practice, was there anything about the roster or anything of, that Luke Fickle said that really caught your attention or you want to talk about or you're, you're excited about? Yeah, I mean, I think the and you, you said it best on your show yesterday, Tanner Mordecai and the comments that he made about Mordecai. Just boy, I mean, the guy is really working hard and he's bringing. It, it's it's just you. I think you you said a comment. I correct me if I'm wrong, but you said like I mean, obviously, as Tanner Mordecai goes, so goes our season next year. Right? Mm-hmm. He is going to be the reason that we succeed or not next year. And the fact that that Luke Fickles talked about him, he's coming in, he's ready to compete. I love it. Um, and I, I just, no real surprises as far as the roster goes. I know we had the Ashford thing, but he's, he's, he's playing. I mean, he's, he's going to be, he's back. He's not in the spring roster, but he's on the team still. So I, I saw that today. So Ashford's not gone, which is good. Is that correct? Am I right about that? Yeah. So Ashford, it, it was reported he was gone. Now he tweeted out like, Hey, I'm still, it was, it was yeah. kind of funny because he's like, hey, guys, I'm still here. Like, I'm, don't forget about me. Right. Like it was kind of a funny tweet. <laughs> like the, it was almost like the bus had left him at a gas station and he's like, Hey guys. So he's still in the, but he's not participating in uh, practice this this spring. Honestly, he, he missed all of last year with an injury. He is a bit of a project, so not participating in spring. I've always been high on him from a height, weight, kind of speed perspective, but he's going to get further behind the eight ball. Unfortunately, not be able to practice, not be able to participate. There's a lot of new numbers at cornerback, so yeah, um, I don't think it I- helps. And for for me, for spring practice, there's there's two things that I'm I just want to bring up real quick. First of all. Have we ever been excited about a spring practice like this? And that it's not only just Luke Fickle and what he's bringing, but it's the marketing of the program. We've said marketing before on the show. What an impressive job he's doing of making all Badger fans, letting us into the program, really letting us into what's happening, you know, seeing the gains that that are made uh, from, from the strength and conditioning. That's been really exciting to watch. And just seeing that how marketable the program is right now. I mean, we're going to be at that launch. I mean, if, if you guys haven't heard that, obviously Ryan said it, we're going to be there. Justin, Ryan, and I, we're going to be there. We're going to do, try to do a show at a bar somewhere. Please come and, and find us. That'll be great. But, and, and the other thing that I'm really excited about is the wide receivers. I cannot wait to, to just read every, and by the way, every practice is going to be open to the media, which is awesome, by the way. So we're going to get a lot of good reports coming out of that. Mm-hmm. And I cannot wait to see what's happening with these receivers. Who's playing? Who's impressing? Who's getting separation on their routes? Like what kind of things is Longo doing? I I, I just can't wait for it. I'm going to, I can't wait. Every day I'm going to just be absorbing all the content. And I'm sure we are going to be talking a lot about spring ball when it starts. And yeah, I mean, 
We've never had a spring like this. We've never had a receiving core like this. We've never had a quarterback room like this. I mean, this is like, this is every Badger football fan's dream. And it's it's unfolding in front of our eyes. So you think Believe with Rajiv is big now? Just wait until football season starts, guys. Let's go. Just wait. Let's go. I love it, man. Um, you know, we're definitely going to be there in the launch. Uh, Mike has a comment in here. If we need any boots on the ground, Mike Ball, let me know if you need any boots on the ground for the launch. Yes. Like, I, A, I want to we want to meet as many people as we can that helps yes. support the show. Cause that we talked about this a lot. This show is a hundred percent about the Badger community and building it up. So yes, absolutely. Mike, I would, I would absolutely appreciate it. We're working to find a venue, all of that. We're going to give, have some giveaways. I'm working to get some, uh, I want to get some Gus bus giveaways to do some of that. Like I'm working on a couple of people to kind of come in and do visits from players to alumni. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, no promises on anything yet, but it should be a lot of fun. And then, uh, Rashid, going back to your points about this is what Badger fans have wanted for a long time from an offensive standpoint. It's also – it's it's this this whole new – like Wisconsin fans have just never – we've had some offenses we've been really excited about. Right? Like we remember the, the great offensive line that was on the Sports Illustrated cover, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But we've never been modernized. I mean, we've, we've seen one thing for – we've eaten one type of food for 20 years. You know, it's, it's not just having a really – stacked room or a stacked offense it's it's a modern look at what wisconsin could potentially be with facilities and with recruiting upgrades and maybe an offensive scheme upgrade i just i I can't wait to see it i absolutely cannot wait to see it um and listen there's questions too right we gotta we gotta see what the defense looks like we gotta see who's gonna step up as as a pass rusher there's real questions and concerns with this team too that are going to come out of spring we're going to have more clarity on those issues as well yeah, you know, it's interesting. There's there are questions, but it it the coaching staff brings with it a confidence, right? That, that those those question marks are going to be figured out, right? Like, you know, Luke, Luke Fickle talked about how adaptable he was to whether it's the 3-3-5 three, three, or the 3-4. He's going to put the best players on the field and and I I believe that. It's not just because I believe in everything Badgers. I really believe that this guy and Phil Longo and everything that they're bringing, they're going to find those holes, they're going to fix those holes. I've in, in the, you know, look, Paul Chris had great years with us and he had some rough years at the end, but we, we lost confidence in Paul Chris's ability to adapt, right? We said that many times, his ability to adapt offensively, his ability to adapt to clock management, everything. I don't have any of those concerns with Luke Fickle because everything he's done from the second he's got on campus has been moving this program mm-hmm. in the direction that it's going now. So even though there are holes and there are, there are concerns, I'm so confident that he's going to find a way through those. He's going to fill those gaps. He's going to, he's going to build the team around the talent that we have and build the team around where our strengths are and hide the weaknesses, build up the strengths. I I just, everything he says, every interview he does, I try to listen to it. I try to hear him and it's just, he just brings about such a confidence. And, you know, you, you talk about people who just, when, when they walk into a room, they just own it. And that's Luke Fickle, right? He walks in the room, he just owns it. And he, you know, when he walks in that locker room, those players are responding, right? When when Brady Collins is doing what he does with the strength and conditioning, those guys are responding. Everyone is responding to this program and to these coaches and what Luke Fickle has brought and the culture that he's brought to this team. It's just something to be, it, it's, I'm amazed of it. And I'm just, I'm so happy that, that we are here and we actually get to experience this. I'm going to put this, this comment, not clink. Thank you for this. Yes. Recruiting staff. Love Let's go. I love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, how can you not be excited about it? How can you not yeah. be excited? Because everything this guy touches is turning to gold. And I, I believe that the season is going to ex- be the same way. Yeah. Mason, uh, Sinsala said underrated aspect of the fickle era arriving in Madison is the massive upgrade in social oh, media content. It's completely. nice. Day. They have, absolutely crushed it and you need to do that in modern college athletics Rajiv, let me ask you this because nothing is ever as we talked about this with basketball losses right but i think this this applies to this as well no loss is ever quite as bad as you make it out to be no win is ever quite as perfect there's going to be some issue on this football team this year that either we're not talking about enough we're not seeing coming what what is the the biggest fly in this ointment you think at the end of this football year we look back and say that's that's the thing that kind of tripped us up a little bit so there's two things I would say. One, I'm a little bit 
concerned about the defensive side of the ball, just a, a little bit here and there, especially up front. I, I'm a little bit skeptical of what we're going to be able to do. You've heard me say many times that, you know, Keanu Benton was such an in- integral part of what we did that I, I wonder how that's going to work out. Um, the second thing is when you have a team that is changing this much, mm-hmm. you never really know what's going to happen. Like, look, we all believe in Phil Longo and what he's bringing and, and that air raid offense and how it's going to work. But We've never seen that at Wisconsin. So we don't really know how that's going to work. We don't really know if all the pieces that were recruited prior to Luke Fickle, do these guys all have the skill sets to play in that offense? Are the guys that, are, that were brought in this year, are they going to mold and mesh with the players we already have? I mean, there's, I think there's that kind of big unknown about, is it really going to just work the way we expect it to? And that that's, so the offensive side, I, I'm worried about, you know, like just how much are, are there going to be any hiccups in just changing this wholesale offense, but defensively up front, specifically up front, I am concerned about that. And um, the last thing I'll say is the O-line last year had a pretty rough year. What's that going to look like, you know, and, and, and a lot of what Longo does, it's, it's still every, any offense you run is still predicated on good offensive line play. That's still a bit of a question mark. Mm-hmm. What about what are, what are your thoughts on all those? Yeah, I'm gonna go with a comment here from Steve Losey because this is this is my biggest concern. Pass rush question mark. Mm, yeah. And I think Steve's dead on here. I I actually feel pretty good about our secondary. I, I really yeah. like our safety grouping and I like the bodies they've amassed at cornerback. I think Alex Smith is a stud. Somebody that Brady Collins, by the way, is raving about compared his mentality to a Kobe type mentality in the weight room. Um, somebody who transformed our pass defense when he got back from injury last year. I like the numbers at cornerback with Alex kind of leading the way. Mm-hmm. I don't feel great about the pass rush. I, I really don't. I, I think you can, in your head, come up well if Peterson takes a step forward and if maybe Curtis Neal is an impact guy in a second year and if Rodas Johnson and if, right, there's a lot of ifs is the problem. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the biggest concern for me. And I, I don't know if they have that answer this year. I really don't. And when you don't have the pass rush, you're putting more pressure on the secondary, which we have confidence in. But if they are... If, if they're getting, you know, just if, if they were not getting that pressure, then whatever secondary you play, if you're not getting pressure, you're going to get torched back there. Yeah, no supervision comes up with uh, bowlers. Bowlers is up to 268. I think he's going to be on the D line. I think that could be a really good spot for him. And maybe he's the answer. Uh, Richard Clayton says the same thing. Uh, moving to DN could be a beast. That maybe that's the answer. I, I think my biggest point though is we don't know, right? We don't know what the answer is. Whereas I think previous like last 10 years at Wisconsin, you always knew. Well, it's going to be – it was Bond, and then you was going to be Van Ginkle you felt good about, and then you thought felt good about Watt, and then you felt good about – there's just been this this constant stream of players. I just don't know if we got that guy. And Varner, oh, obviously, no supervision bringing up Varner as well. I would like to put up this comment from Bo, um, who's a frequent commenter of the show. Thank you, Bo. It's so much easier to blitz and hide deficiencies in your defense when you're playing with the lead. That's mm-hmm. an interesting thing because we've never really been a team that is that is often played with the lead and especially played with a high-powered offense like we expect to have. So, yeah, I mean, I, obviously – the cornerstone of the Badgers for many years has been Jim Leonard's defense, right? Like that's, that's what saved us and kept us in games. Well, now if the, if, if all that pressure kind of moves on the other side of the ball and to Tanner Mordecai and the receivers and the Phil Longo offense, and, and we've talked a lot about Braylon Allen running into six man boxes, what's that going to be like? Right. So you, we really could be in a situation where we're just outscoring teams and we don't necessarily need those, 10 point giving up 10 points on defense we can give up 17 right. 24 and, and be able to outscore teams so yeah this is a good point and it's something that to bring up and it's going to be something to see very early on in the season what does our defense need to do to win the games no it's, it's an excellent point that I, I would expect our numbers to be down defensively this year and sure. but not necessarily not necessarily reflective of a worse defense we're just going to be in in more shootouts. I think we're, there's, there's going to be more possessions, right? We're going to play with more pace on offense. The, the Badgers offensive players have talked about that ad nauseum. So like the team, the defense is going to be on the field more, right? The other teams are going to be attacking our defense more. So the yards, I think are going to go up. I think the points mm-hmm. allowed are going to go up. You're going to have to look at efficiency stats to really determine how good this defense is compared to previous baselines. So I think we're going to wrap it up there. Um, we have 35 minutes in again. I try to keep them about 30 minutes because I don't want to try to, take up too much of anybody's time i really do appreciate everybody tuning in as always we don't get to every comment uh, i wish we could get to more i will always put the blame on, on me for that one rajiv 
Um, <laughs> thank you everybody for tuning in. It is incredibly humbling and we are so, so gracious for it. There's 230 people watching now. More people will watch tomorrow on Wisconsin. We got another win. We will do a playback for the next game. So that's a, a live opportunity for you, everybody to watch the game with us, to interact with us as we're watching the game. That's a lot of fun. Uh, Rajiv, you had something. Yeah, I just wanted to say one more time for those of you that are going to be in Madison on in, on April twenty, what's April twenty second? Please come out and meet us. Brian will get us all the details once we know where we're going to be. We would love yep. to meet as many of you guys that that really are the reason that we like to do this. And all the comments really make this fun. And we, you know, Ryan and I, and Justin talk a lot offline too in our, in our group chat. But we talk a lot about how great it is that everyone contributes and everything. So we would love to meet all of you guys. So if you're in Madison or if you want to come to Madison, please come meet us. That'd be great. 100%. CJ, appreciate you uh, on Wisconsin, and we'll talk again tomorrow. By the way, I've had an interview that I haven't been able to get to. It should pop tomorrow. I keep saying that, but I, I don't string anything out on purpose, I promise. You're going to like it, though. Trust me. On Wisconsin, and let's talk later.